Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue today at Atlantic City Country Club in Northfield, New Jersey. You know, when you walk through those doors right behind me, you are walking into a virtual history, a different time and place here at Atlantic City Country Club. The Leo Frazier Room, the Sonny Frazier Room, the Johnny McDermott Room. Yes, this is the home of the birdie, and its symbol is the bell. The bell was used in the early 1900s to remind golfers that the last trolley was about to leave for nearby Atlantic City. But today, the Atlantic City Country Club is owned by the Ottinger family, and they have certainly refurbished this beautiful golf club. And coming up next, we're going to show you exactly what's been done to Atlantic City Country Club, both in the clubhouse, outside, and on this beautiful golf course. All next right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by Destination Montco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA Golf Professional. Along with being stewards of the game of golf, your local PGA Professional wears many hats. We are teachers. We are players. We are managers. We are merchandisers. And community leaders. But we all wear one badge. PGA Professionals are well-trained experts who work hard to share the joy of golf with our neighbors for over 90 years. To find your local PGA Professional, visit phillypga.com. Brought to you by the Philadelphia section of the PGA. We are the experts in the game and business of golf. The first tee teaches you golf, but they also teach you life skills. We learn things you can use everywhere, every day. Hey like how to meet people you don't know. I'm Nicholas. It comes in handy on your first day of school or interviewing for a job. Thank you. Some of the best golf lessons have very little to do with golf. The life skills young people learn at the First Tee stay with them long after they leave. Visit thefirsttee.org to learn more. Hi, I'm Janie. Let's play some golf. Welcome back to Inside Golf. We're here at beautiful Atlantic City Country Club in Northfield, New Jersey. And I'm with Mike Tucci, who is the director of golf, PGA professional, here at Atlantic City Country Club. Mike, thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. Always enjoy being at this great golf venue. You know, we're standing, let's see, we're standing on the putting green or first tee or both? Both. It kind of morphs. One morphs into the other. I love that about Atlantic City. One of the few country clubs in the world where you can be on the putting green and the first tee at the same time. This is very true. It is quite unique. This first hole, uh, I got the scorecard here. Its name is Yay Begin. That's kind of obvious. And from the tips, it plays 430 and, or 450 rather, and about 430 from the middle tee. So yeah, that's pretty intimidating, yeah. especially if the wind is coming. I don't know what direction would that be, the south maybe, huh? Yes, and it blows often here. But it's a great opening hole. Yes, it is. Do you have, uh, and I'm sure you do, over the course of 18 holes in Atlantic City, a few of your favorites. Is number one right there at the top of the list? or No, actually it's not. It's, uh, it's two long shots for me. I'm not hitting it quite as far as I used to, so <laughs> I'm pulling a head cover off on the second shot. So It is the number three handicap hole. And it deserves that ranking. Okay, so uh, number one, not Mike's spot. I think number three or... Number, number three four. is one of my favorites. Not particularly a long hole, right? No, but it's got some character. It's got uh, trouble down the right, out of bounds, and uh, thick rough and woods. And on the left side, uh, it's bunkered all the way up with a long, expanded waste bunker. There are bunkers at the green, and it's elevated. It's a short iron into the green if you hit the fairway, but the green is uh, a little difficult. It's uh, sloped from back to front. Difficult putting surface. And you know, after number three, you get to the first par three on the golf course, the fourth hole. Well, great views, uh, as almost every hole has, great views of Atlantic City skyline. Oh, and once again, you're right out there uh, toward the marshland and the water and, and the winds if they're coming from the east. And uh, it may only play 115 yards, but that's only on the card, right? That's correct. The wind's blowing, and it usually is. Uh, 
difficult little par three, and the backdrop is the whole skyline of Atlantic City. So sometimes you get a little mesmerized by the backdrop and forget what you're there for. But it is a wonderful little par three. Okay, and your first par five, number six, I believe. Yes. And there, you know, you got that bunker out to the right, and it looks like, oh, I can get it over that bunker. Next thing you know, the wind picks up, bang, right in the middle of your backswing. Ball lands right in that yeah, bunker. Makes that and you're making that all of a sudden a seven possibility. Oh, a long, long <laughs> hole from that bunker. <laughs> and then up around the green itself, uh, you got that rather expansive bunker in front of the green that always seems to catch somebody's ball in a foursome. Yeah, and you typically will find a pin right behind that bunker. <laughs> and from uh, your approach shot, it looks like there isn't any green to work with, although it is a big green. Uh, the bunker has a pretty good lip on it, and it kind of confuses the player, which I think was by design. And, and the closing three holes on the front nine are as good as any closing three holes, I think, in, in Philadelphia area golf. Yeah, no question about it. You got a long par four, you got a, a relatively medium length par three, and then number nine. Once again, like every other hole around here, when the wind starts blowing a little bit, it's an impossible par four. It, it, you're happy with a score of five on that hole as well. And it does blow. It tends to blow in your face on that hole and um, extremely long just to carry the corner and have a look at the green. If it's, you can get it up and down and make four there, you've done well. Everything you want in a par four. And let's talk about the back nine because I know your, your favorite hole is on the back nine, right? Yes, I am a big fan of number 14, which again is a short hole that uh, just because it's short doesn't mean it's not difficult. Still trouble out there. There can be a lot of trouble. You can make a big number on that hole if you get greedy and try to force it up the right side and get closer to the green. Not necessary. You could hit almost any shot off of that tee. Uh, lay up with a hybrid, uh, fairway wood, even an iron, and have just a short iron into the green. But uh, when the green is reachable or uh, tempting you, uh, we sometimes make that mistake, get a little greedy. Yeah. I always say, you know, we're not looking for the hero shot all the time. We're looking for the smart shot. For me, it might be a three wood off the tee. You still only have, if you hit it decently, for a player of my uh, ilk, uh, a wedge or a nine iron, depending on which way the wind's blowing. Yeah, and it gives What's you the matter a, with that on a par four? No, it gives you a very good birdie opportunity. Right. Green's a little tricky. It has some swales in it and some undulation, uh, a little bit of a false front. Uh, and not room to miss it on the right. So uh, a short iron into that green is probably the more sensible way to approach it. Interesting, two of the last four holes are par threes. Correct. One of them directly out toward the marshland. And, uh, you know, once again, the wind blowing, it's everything you need to get a par there. Another one of my favorite holes, believe 15. it or not. They're back to back, but uh, a par three that can really change the course of a match. Uh, if the wind's blowing, again, as it usually does, this hole is kind of sticking right out into the, into the bay. And um, not a very easy target to hit. You have trouble short, trouble right, and a collection area on the left that makes it a very difficult up and down. And then so a good challenge. Number 17, uh, because of the terrain out there, you have an extra long flagpole just so we can see where the hole is located because it's only, what, sometimes 145, 155 yards, Correct. but you can't see the green. Uh, depending on where the pin is, there's a big dune up the right side of the hole that will block the view of the bottom of the cup. So yeah, the, the large pin is designed to give you at least a target, but you may not see the entire green. And then 18, dog leg, par four, all the wind and all the golf hole you need. Absolutely. It's a One great, great closing hole. Yes, it is. And uh, again, a four uh, there is a great score. Mike, okay, we went over the golf course. A lot of viewers maybe have played here, been guests here in the past, but there's some great opportunities for memberships here at Atlantic City, part of the Ottinger Golf Group. Tell us about it. Well, that's the, the added benefit of being a member of the Ottinger Golf Group. We have three top 10 facilities. Uh, Ballamore, Scotland Run, and Atlantic City Country Club. Uh, an example of what I mean by the benefit of it is we hosted an LPGA Pro-Am just uh, last week and 30 plus members of ours who could not play here that day because we were closed for the uh, regular play went over to Ballamore, didn't have to interrupt their schedule and played at Ballamore, had a wonderful day and it's only 12 to 15 minutes from here. The other thing is Scotland Run being a um, Williamstown location can be uh, played on the way down to the shore or on the way home. 
So once again, being a member of Ottinger Golf allows you the variety of three separate facilities that are all in the top 10, all maintained at the highest level of course conditions and customer service. So we're, we're pretty happy with the value in a membership. You have a lot of reasons to be happy. You talked about the uh, up the condition of the golf course. I played recently in the Pro-Am at Philly Cricket Club on a Wednesday, played here two days later, and I wasn't sure which fairways I was playing on. They were all the same. Well, thank you for that. That's high compliments. Well, Mike, it's always a pleasure to come here and to the other Ottinger Golf Group uh, courses, be it Scotland Run, Ballamore, or your home now, Atlantic City Country. Well, thank you. Good luck. Have a great summer. Thank you. There are stories everywhere at Atlantic City Country Club. Jersey Man and Philly Man magazine, published by former Eagles tight end Ken Dunnick, is everything you want in a publication catering to men's interest. Enjoy articles on politics, business, the mob, wine, food, fitness, and travel. Written by the likes of George Anastasia, Bill Lyon, Sam Carcitti, and Mike Kern. Want to grow your business? Ask for information on our legacy and chairman clubs. They meet regularly and can be a valuable tool for your company. Subscriptions are only $20 a year for six issues. They're available at Jersey Man and magazine.com. Welcome back to Inside Golf. Welcome back to Atlantic City Country Club. As I noted earlier in the show, a lot of new things happening at this historic venue, an icon of South Jersey golf, of Philadelphia area golf in Atlantic City. And one of the new additions is Frank Varallo, who is the new general manager. Yes. Welcome to uh, the new position, Thank Frank. Thank you. Thank you. South Jersey native, though, so you're familiar, and I'm sure familiar now with the history of this fantastic Atlantic City Country Club. But tell us about the new additions, one of which we are uh, right now conducting our interview. This is the outdoor patio, right? Yes, yes. We uh, re recently remodeled the outdoor patio and we had a, an addition built uh, sky deck, 2,500 square feet, overlooking the Atlantic City skyline and our beautiful golf course. There's not a better view of Atlantic City, I don't think, than where we're sitting right now on yeah. upstairs from the sky deck. It's even a better shot. We've uh, expanded this to uh, expand our client experience with uh, ceremonies and weddings and banquets and also for our golf outings. Must be beautiful. We're here during the day, but I can imagine around twilight, uh, as evening approaches, it must be spectacular. Yeah, the view at night is just as great as it is during the day. Um, unbelievable. Now, one of the real assets is somebody who's been here a little bit longer than you. Tell us about Chef Ed. Chef Ed, he's uh, excellent. Yes, we actually uh, completely renovated our dining room, the tap room. Uh, we also uh, built a new open kitchen uh, that services that area as well. And of course, that is always under the control of uh, our chef, Ed Daggers. And Ed, we have done some work with Ed in the past. Uh, he's no stranger to people who have been here at Atlantic City, and he's a master for whatever it takes. Ed Daggers can prepare, but it's also in his presentation, and he's got a great personality. Great personality. He can run the kitchen, and he can actually run the floor as well. He's, uh, I've seen him in action. I don't want to say he's your MVP, but he's pretty close to it, isn't so he's he? He's in our top three, that's for sure. You know, the other thing I love about Atlantic City is the history, and we've talked about that and always do when we come to Atlantic City Country Club. is so rich in history, and you notice it as soon as you enter the lobby. To the right, you have the Frazier Room. To the left, you have the Johnny McDermott Room. When you go into the grill, you see the pictures of Bob Hope and Arnold Palmer. I mean, do you feel like a pretty lucky guy? Very uh, much so. Coming into this position now and having the, the, the history of Atlantic City Country Club on your side. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, it's like walking into a museum uh, of golf. Uh, uh, it's, and it's, the renovations that we did in those rooms, everyone must come see, they're, they're fantastic. Absolutely, and, and the rich history, you can go back, you can go forward, 
And I know Mr. Palmer is, uh, of course, visible in some of the videos by way of the kiosk describing his own personal history here with uh, Leo Frazier and, and his own personal game of golf here at Atlantic City. It's, it's really special. He was here all the time when he was with the Coast Guard. Um, yeah, he loved this place. Uh, the Frazier family, you know, loved this place. And, and now with the Ottinger family taking over ownership, uh, they're going to create their own history going forward. While the Ottinger family already has uh, made their mark with the additions in the last couple of years, remodeling the inside, adding on to the outside, and the golf course from having played it uh, recently, it's in Great, great condition. Great, thank you. Yes, it is. You're to uh, be really somebody to be envied. You've got a great position, my friend. I do. I'm lucky. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. All right, pleasure. One of the new additions here at Atlantic City Country Club is this beautiful halfway house. Right off the ninth green, it's adjacent to the clubhouse and the pro shop. You want to stop in here for a snack? Say hello to Cassie. Hello, how are Cassie, you? what's on the menu? Cold sandwiches, hot hot dogs, fresh drinks. Cold sandwiches like chicken salad, tuna you got salad, tuna salad, and turkey, and fresh hot dogs on the bun. Cassie, so many choices, only one thing to eat. Give me some time. We'll be back with more on Inside Golf and more from beautiful Atlantic City Country Club in just a moment. All right. Let's see. Uh... At the first tee, they're teaching us how to set goals. It doesn't matter how big or small they are. I want to break 80 someday. My goal is to go to college. Someday, I'm going to be the fourth female president of the United States. Mm, maybe fifth. Some of the best golf lessons have very little to do with golf. The life skills young people learn at the First Tee stay with them long after they leave. Visit thefirsttee.org to learn more. One of my goals is to get on TV. Check. Welcome back to Inside Golf. It is time to get ready to tee it off. This is our teed off segment and our panelists today here at the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort, Harry Mays, who holds down Fort, 10 a.m. to uh, 2 p.m. weekdays on 97.5 The Fanatic. And from myphillygolf.com, the distinguished, notice that little mustache and what is that, a full beard you're working on? Right. Joe Logan, we'll get into the I shaved, I just didn't stand as close to the razor. I got you. Uh, this is a Ryder Cup year, gentlemen, and it will be played in Minnesota. Where is it, Harry? Chaska? Chaska, Minnesota. Hazel. Which is Hazeltine. And it hasn't been the most favorable of events for American golf fans over the past. Going back to 99, they've only won it twice since then. Most recently was, what, 08, I believe. But there's always this year. Although Danny Willett recently, when he won the Masters, gave the Euros another shot in the arm. In fact, Joe, what is it now? The last time I checked, top uh, rankings of golfers in the world, six of the top 10 are foreigners. Are foreigners. foreigners. Four of Four them are Europeans. Will probably be at Hazeltine. It's not a good sign for the Americans, Harry. No, it's not. I mean, you know, you've got uh, Rory McIlroy, of course, Danny Willett uh, coming off the Masters win, emerges. Justin Rose is playing really well. Uh, you know, this is this is something that where the United States with with Phil getting older, Tiger, you know, in, the, in his physical state, uh, a lot of these young guys, albeit talented, are still rather inexperienced or have never really felt the Ryder Cup. I mean, you have to give European team a distinct advantage, even though it's on American soil. 
in you my know, view. You mentioned Phil, and of course, we all know, wouldn't that be ironic that Phil's last big moment at a Ryder Cup ended with him blasting his captain, <laughs> Tom Watson, <laughs> and never to be seen again until he becomes a captain someday? That will happen. Uh, that would be a sad state of affairs. Right. He needs, you know, I hope he qualifies for the team. I hope, I hope he's there. I'd like to see him have one last hoorah in the Ryder Cup. It, it would be good for the game, good for golf, certainly good for Phil. I don't keep up on all this stuff. I'm sure you keep up with it more. Davis Love the third is the team captain. Correct. He's been there before. He was the losing captain uh, at Medina the last time. Oh, yeah. If you recall, the Americans were winning big time going into the final day Sunday and managed to lose almost all the singles matches and uh, lost the Ryder Cup. It was the most deflating loss in recent memory, certainly. Uh, More deflating was the fact that Rory McIlroy almost missed his tee time That's and went right. out and won his match. That's right. Without even warming up, maybe a couple couple swings on the practice range. Harry, what I was going to get to, you know, we talked about Mickelson and his points that he made about the pods and all that, getting guys to play with guys who were comfortable, and he thought Watson could have done a better job of chemistry. Uh, does that mean that Al Davis Love gets the stamp of approval, even if Phil doesn't play, that he's going to mirror what Phil had to say, or is Davis going to do it his way? I, I think you'd have to adopt some of what, what Phil's suggestions were. I think some of the stuff that he said was dead on, but you know, if Phil's going to make the team, it's pretty much sure he's going to need a new partner because Keegan Bradley is not on his way to making the Ryder Cup, and they had such a good pairing, you know, for a couple of years. I mean, right now you look at what Jordan Spieth and Patrick Reed, you know, look to be, you know, they, they had some, you know, good, big success and some good chemistry. You got to develop that chemistry because I think that's one of the things for many years that Europe has had over the United States. The United States have been a lot of singles guys, not really, not a team atmosphere. And I think that's gone, been proven that that's helped Europe significantly. And uh, don't expect Tiger Woods to be there except in the role of being a, what, an assistant captain or something. Ambassador, right? Ambassador <laughs> cheerleader. Another veteran who may not be there is Jim Furyk, who's been one of the bulwarks of the team for years. You've got uh, Davis Love III, and then on the other side, the Euros, you got Darren Clark, and Darren Clark is going to have to make some captain's picks. And there's a guy who's not ranked in the top 50, but he had a real good Masters recently by the name of Lee Westwood, and he's known to have thrown a few pints down with Mr. Clark. And if he plays the way he did at Augusta through the season, I would think he's going to work his way onto that roster. You know, Darren Clark has already stated publicly that he's probably going to lose some friends with his captain's picks which is going to be fun to watch. Well, one that he could potentially lose too, and has been a fan favorite, Harry, is uh, Ian Poulter. Well, yeah, the fan favorite of the Europe side. He's been uh, uh, the thorn in our side. But I think regardless of where he is in world rankings, you have to put him on the team. Really? I really do. There's something about that event with that guy where he rises to the occasion. You agree with that? If Poulter, I agree with everything you said about Ian Poulter, but, but I tell you what, if you're Darren Clark and if you have to reach down too far to take somebody like Poulter, then you're really out on a limb uh, and Poulter better perform. You weren't impressed with that second place in Puerto Rico? Uh, you know what? It was good, yeah. but... Uh, <laughs> but he had the lead right. oh, going I know. into the last I know. day. Usually that's Ian I know. time. I know. And he didn't pull the trigger. We'll see what happens. Hazeltine in the fall, another Ryder Cup. And we'll be back more inside golf in just a moment. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort. And it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, and there are nearly 500 guest rooms, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. Today we're here at LP Steak, Chef Luke Palladino's newest restaurant here at Valley Forge Casino Resort. And here we're introducing the new bar menu, which are great classic favorites from Chef Luke Palladino that you can taste for under $15. One of those items is featured here, which is the deluxe cheeseburger with Chef Luke's house-made sauce and Parmesan potato skin fries, which are amazing. 
Also new at LP Steak is the 777 Happy Hour. From Sunday through Friday, you can try $7 signature appetizers and $7 drinks until 7 p.m. Some of the items featured are crab cake sliders, handcrafted pierogies, and calamari. We hope that you'll come try the new experience at the bar at LP Steak as well as 777 Happy Hour. And for a limited time only over the summer, Chef Luke Palladino will be presenting a pop-up restaurant, Fianco, where you can try some of Chef's signature Italian favorites. I'd be nowhere near the golfer or person that I am today without Cam. We don't hold our thoughts back with each other, and that's why we're able to be so successful. Jordan brought with him a tremendous desire to achieve, whether it was that first day that we met or every session thereafter. One of the epic performances. Accomplishing these lifetime goals could not have done it without Cam. The best stories end in thanks. Share your story at thankspgapro.com. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Before we leave Mike Tucci and Atlantic City Country Club, Mike, this kiosk here, you have about four of them in the clubhouse. And what's the purpose of this? Well, it was part of the owner's vision to uh, allow people to come and tour the clubhouse, look at all the history, the artifacts, all the memorabilia, and then get a bit of a tour from uh, an interactive video. These are entertaining as well as informative, and they are biography-style videos. So they have a uh, history of Atlantic City, Correct. dating back to the turn of the century. John J. McDermott, who we all know, a Philadelphia native, twice a winner of the U.S. Open. And had professional. And had your job right here at Atlantic City. The great Leo Frazier, who for years owned this venue, and uh, Sonny Frazier. His brother, yes. His brother, who was a great amateur player who died way too young. Yes, yeah, so you can come here and view these uh, at any time. There's no charge. Come into the museum, check out the videos. They're, uh, again, informative and entertaining as well. Mike, thanks again for having us. It's been our pleasure, and I hope our viewers take advantage of everything we saw today here at Atlantic City Country Club. You will not want to miss it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to Mike and the staff here at Atlantic City Country Club. I'm Harry Donahue, and remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. See you Atlantic City as well as Scotland Run and Ballymore. And we'll see you next week right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by Destination Montco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional.